Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Middleware Friday for February 17th, 2017. Today we're going to talk about Azure monitoring using Logic Apps and creating ServiceNow tickets. So the motivation for this content really comes from one of the recent Logic Apps Live episodes where they talked about a new feature that's enabled as part of Azure monitoring that allows you to call out to an Azure Logic App whenever you have an error. So we're going to take a closer look at that. And there's some examples out there where people might connect to Slack or perhaps SMS or PagerDuty. Uh, for us, we, uh, we do use ServiceNow. So I figured it would be worthwhile to check that out to see what the experience would be like in order to get an event raised from Azure Monitoring and creating a ServiceNow incident. In the community corner, we're going to take a look at exposing SFE functionalities to the cloud using Azure Logic Apps. So this is by my buddy Glenn, who's also an Azure MVP. And related to our feature content, we'll take a look at webhook notifications inside of BizTalk 360. Almost the opposite of the previous scenario, where BizTalk 360 can be used to raise events via a webhook and as a result we can call out to Azure Logic Apps and then send out email notifications or or whatever may be required. So within our scenario there's two main parts. The first part is represented in green or it's going to go ahead and raise errors inside of Azure which will allow Azure monitoring to pick up those Azure alerts that get invoked once we've exceeded certain thresholds. More specifically, we have a Azure Logic App, which is going to run on a recurrence trigger every 15 seconds. And what it's going to go do is it's going to call an operation inside of an API app that's going to throw HTTP 500 internal server errors. When that occurs, Azure Monitoring is going to be looking for any Azure alerts where their threshold has been exceeded. And that's exactly what's going to happen in our case as a result of hammering this API app that's going to start throwing exceptions. Once that occurs, we've got an Azure Logic app that has a webhook exposed, which Azure Monitoring can tie into. Once the Azure Logic app has been invoked, we can go ahead and create an incident inside of ServiceNow. Here's the operation that I was just describing. And in this case, what I'm doing is I'm simply throwing a not implemented exception, got a very short description here of web API method not implemented. When you go ahead and call that from the Swagger test harness, we can actually go and see this error as it's been raised. All right, so let's jump into the demo. So I'm in the Azure portal right now. What I'm going to do is go ahead and enable this Logic App. Pro tip, when you have a recurrence trigger to run every 15 seconds, make sure you disable your Logic App in between your testing. I've let this run, as you can see down here, for more than 24 hours and had close to 10K of billable executions. So lesson learned. While that's running, Let's go take a look at this Logic App. It's very simple, recurrence every 15 seconds. Then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and call my operation, which is just simply called error get. I'm passing in an ID, really because when you create a new web API and a new controller, it's gonna do all of the scaffolding for you. So that was just the simplest way to go. If we go back to the Logic App, we'll see that it is running, let's just refresh this, and we can see that we've got several instances that are currently running. Now what we want to do is head over to our API. So obviously the telemetry within Azure is a little bit behind. I may stop the recording and restart it once we see more action. But in general, you want to start with your API and you want to establish your alert. So if we scroll down on the left-hand side for my particular API, I can go ahead and check out my alerts. 
Now we could see that I have one alert configured and it was last active one day ago. So we expect that this will be active once again here shortly. And really what's going on here is we're looking for HTTP server errors or 500 errors. And whenever there's more than one, we're gonna go ahead and call this particular webhook. Now what's interesting about this, it is a little bit deceiving, uh, the fact that this Logic App URL has been provided. If I go ahead and create a new alert, I can go through the standard configuration of that alert. And I really have two options when it comes down to notifications. I can add the email address for administrators or additional folks interested in the alert, or I can provide a webhook. So this caught me off guard a little bit because of, of the experience that the Logic App team was talking about within Azure Monitoring, where they're saying, you know, there's this direct integration available now between an Azure Alert and Azure Logic Apps. So what I did is I went hunting and I found my way over to Azure Monitoring and found a little bit of a different experience when it came to Logic App integration. So if I come over here and click on my alert, I now have the ability to call out to a specific Logic App. Now, so this is what really caught me off guard is that this take action logic app option doesn't exist when you are applying the alert itself. But from the Azure monitoring, I can't actually add an alert here. So what you end up having to do is to create the alert on the actual resource itself. So I'm just gonna call this test. And as we can see, we've now seen um, some data coming in. So we should see some telemetry and some alerts firing here pretty soon. I'm just gonna call this test again. Doesn't really matter what these thresholds are. We're gonna leave the actions blank for now and we'll just hit okay. The alerts now being added. If we head back to Azure monitoring, we'll find that my alert has now been created and now I can go ahead and actually choose which logic app I want to actually run. So you need to enable that feature first, provide your subscription, and then go ahead and provide a logic app. Now the logic app needs to have an HTTP request endpoint. So I have more than two logic apps in my subscription, but in this case, I only have two that have an HTTP endpoint. I could go ahead and select this one, but this is the one that we're actually using in our actual demonstration. So our test application has been running and I see now that we have reached an error and Azure monitoring has detected that our alert has fired. And as a result, we have some service degradation as of three minutes ago. Let's go ahead and check out to see what's going on from a Logic Apps perspective. Here we can see we've got several instances running. Uh, we've got several instances that have failed. Now what's going on is these will take more than a minute to run, largely because we've got some retries that are going on that are built in to Logic Apps itself. Now let's go over to our logic app that will receive an event from Azure monitoring whenever one of these Azure threshold alerts is detected. So in this case, we can see that we received an inbound request. What I've chosen to do is I've taken the inbound message that gets sent and we'll take a look at that in the slides in a moment. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the parse JSON shape. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take the inbound JSON message. It's going to then apply it to the JSON schema that I would have provided to this at design time. And then basically I'm going to get a type message. Now as part of the request, you do have the ability to specify that here, but I figured I would do it outside in the parse JSON shape, really just to highlight that um, you can do it outside of the inbound HTTP request connector. Uh, this was another feature that was recently called out on Logic Apps Live, and it was 
particularly useful when we talk about service bus queues and topics where you're going to get a message inbound it's going to be untyped you want to make sure it's typed so then you can easily use it in downstream connections now if you recall back from episode one where we protected a logic app with api management i've got a custom service now connector that has really some prerequisite operations that have to be called so for example, I need to get a reference ID for my user. I need to get a reference ID for the assignment group. And then I can go ahead and create a post. And once I've done creating the post to ServiceNow, I can go ahead and send out an email. We'll just take a closer look at this from a design time perspective. So here's JSON, here's my actual schema. Here's parse JSON shape. Here's my actual JSON schema. I'm going to pass into it the body coming from the inbound request. Now what happens, and I'll show you this in the upcoming slides, is that whenever an alert is raised, it has a status of activated. Now once that status actually disappears, or the, the issues disappear, an update will get fired, and in that case the status is going to be set to resolved. I don't want to try to create a ServiceNow incident when my issues resolve. If anything, I could go ahead and close that incident out. I've chosen not to do that at this point in time. But when I do see that the status is set to activated, I want to execute this branch of logic. Let's now jump into ServiceNow and we'll take a look at the last event. And sure enough, I can see that the caller was Azure monitoring. Uh, it was incident uh, three that ended in three. I have the full length of the resource that failed. You can also see the assignment group that the ticket was signed to and the impact urgency and priority. Let's go back and actually turn off our test harness just to prevent further, or just so that we can get the resolution notification coming back from Azure. So we'll go ahead and disable this. And as you noticed in the logic app, we had an email connector at the very end of the process, which goes ahead and sends out an email to the recipient, to the target recipient, indicating that an incident's been created in Azure and that the, and that also includes the incident number. So that concludes the demo, but let's just do a quick recap of what you saw. Uh, when you wanna go ahead and create an alert, it's really a multi-step process if you want to be able to bind a logic app directly to an alert. Where you start with is at the, the Azure resource that you want to monitor. So in this case, it's my API app. I'm just reusing the Cognitive Services API from one of the earlier episodes. I go ahead and I click on alerts. I then can go ahead and add an alert. Now I'll provide a, a resource. In this case, it was the actual site. I can provide it a name description and then there's several different metrics and events that I can choose for now I, I doesn't really matter I can just put whatever I want I'll leave the email section and webhook section blank because I'm going to go ahead and bind to a logic app once I'm in the Azure monitoring screen and to get to the Azure monitoring screen within the Azure portal on the left hand side click on monitor and then you you'll, can click on alerts and then go ahead and you'll see the alert that we had just created. You can then go ahead and update that alert, change any of the thresholds. In this case, it was HTTP server errors, condition greater than five in the last five minutes. And now I can go ahead and choose my logic app. I need to enable it. I can then go ahead and select it. Then what is interesting, if you go back to the alert section for the actual API itself, you do see that the webhook is actually being populated with the URL from the Azure Logic app. So what it's really doing is saving you a step where you have to go ahead and copy the URL from the Logic app request connector and then paste it in here. It's really just saving you that step. So from a monitoring solution, uh, I suggest, you know, in order to get the shape of the message, one thing you can do is you can create a blank inbound request connector and then you can go ahead and post that message body to a service such as RequestBin. And that's what I did um, just to get the actual sample message. 
Uh, you can also get that out of the the logs or the trace the trace logs that's part of logic apps and this is the shape of the actual message that's coming from the azure alerting service as i mentioned before we have a status of which will have a state of activated when the error actually is invoked or the threshold is exceeded in this case the metric name is http server errors there's a count um, there's a threshold and a value and basically there's an operator as well. In addition, you have all of the different resources. And so what you can do is this is all metadata that does show up. Now, when I wanna go ahead and include it into ServiceNow, I certainly have the ability to pass any of these resources over to the ServiceNow ticket that will directly link back to the Azure service that raised the error. Also, I talked about creating typed messages with the parse JSON shape. What I can actually go ahead and do is take that, that message that was in my request bin and then actually create a schema out of the JSON schema.net website. Here's where my JSON schema is. I then can pluck it into the parse JSON activity and then I will have a typed message after the message leaves that shape. We talked a bit about the, the monitoring solution and as I discussed earlier, we've got a condition where we're going to check to see if it's activated. If it is, we're then going to talk to ServiceNow. If not, uh, we'll do nothing. So this would be the example of a error that has been resolved. So for example, when I stop my test harness from generating errors, what will happen is sometime after the five minutes, I will get basically another notification saying that the issue has been resolved. You could go ahead and implement logic to close any incidents that you may have created as a result of the errors being thrown. All right, moving on to our community content. So first up, we're going to take a look at exposing SAP functionalities to the cloud by Glenn. So this topic is of particular interest to me, uh, just having done a lot of SAP work in the past. So what Glenn has gone ahead and done here is he's used Azure Logic Apps and the on-premise data gateway in order to communicate with SAP. So he walks you through how you would go ahead and create that, um, including configuring the on-premise data gateway, because since SAP is on-prem and you have a logic app sitting in the cloud, you need basically to build a bridge between your data center and the Azure cloud. And one way of doing that is through the on-premise data gateway. So once you go ahead and configure that, Azure logic apps will be able to traverse your firewall using some service bus re relay magic and then you're able to go ahead and call an SAP, in this case, BAPI. What Glenn is doing here is he's actually getting a customer list from the on-premise SAP system. Now, next up, we're going to feature a recent blog post from BizTalk 360. So as part of BizTalk 360 version eight, BizTalk 360 introduced it some custom channels for notifications. And really what this allows you to do is it's almost like an event-based alerting mechanism that allows you to call out to different systems whenever specific events occur. And I hope I get this right. Uma Maheshwaran is has gone ahead and built an Azure Logic app that gets called from BizTalk 360 when a particular alarm gets triggered from BizTalk 360 itself. So in this case, going to get an inbound HTTP request, providing an HTTP response, and then an email notification is going to get sent out. Obviously you can do whatever you want once you're in Azure Logic itself. Perhaps you wanna reach out to ServiceNow, maybe you wanna reach out to Remedy, or perhaps Slack or some other channel. You can go ahead and do so. Within the blog post, a pretty good walkthrough where you would go ahead and provide the URL of your webhook. And really this is your logic app 
it's going to be a post you need to provide application on JSON otherwise Logic Apps isn't going to be happy and won't be able to interpret the inbound payload type now within this configuration this is where we go ahead and configure the alarm and map the alarm to the actual webhook notification channel and sure enough once that gets triggered an email is sent and shows up in your inbox well i thought it was a pretty good extensibility story that really highlights biztox 360 and its ability to plug in to a variety of other systems whenever there's some sort of alert or event that's going that's getting created or generated inside of biztox and is being monitored by biztox 360. Well, that concludes the show thanks again for watching it's hard to believe that it's been seven episodes already and uh, keep going strong I'm trying to line up a few more guest speakers in the next few weeks so look for that and thanks again for watching also want to thank biztalk360 for being a valued partner of the show uh, if you have any biztalk or service bus monitoring needs i encourage you to check out their website at biztalk360.com. And lastly, here are the music credits. So we'll see you next week on Middleware Friday.